Well, everybody, welcome back to my channel, talking about what to do when you're going through a major transition, a major loss, so as to not lose your way or do anything drastic and destroy your life. There are times that come to all of us, especially as men at midlife, at quarter life, where we go through a major transition. And it's kind of the stereotype that when these things happen, men go and get the trophy wife or the hot red Corvette or go get a bunch of jewelry. But instead, God wants us to stay focused and to know that he has an amazing plan that he's working even in the middle of the pain that you're going through. So I have a few steps I want to give you. First of all is remember that you're dying to something and to let God remove the past from your life. It might be your job, a relationship, maybe your health. When you're at these moments in life, God is taking something away in order to give you something better. Remember what happened to Job, a man after God's own heart, a man who was righteous, and yet God took away everything that he loved. But what Job had to do was to recognize that God was in the middle of all his pain. Like he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. He giveth and he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number two is to put your present, your past, and your future on the altar. Make sure that you don't allow Satan to fill your mind with depression, with suicidal thoughts, with anxiety, with uh, having those old habits come back. Stay on the altar. Bring your pain, your life, your confusion to the altar of God. What does that mean that we bring things to the altar? Remember when Elijah had all these prophets of Baal coming after him. What did he do? It says that God took him to a cave and there God met him. In the middle of his depression and suicidal thoughts, in the middle of his physical anguish, God met him and he fed him. He said to him, Elijah, sleep for the journey is long. Take time, my dear friend, to rest. Put your pain on the altar. Make sure that you're connected to Jesus, to his body, of, to the body of Christ, to his people. Surrender everything to God. Number three is it will get better. There's a book that I have read that I love. It's called The Happiness Curve. And I'm going to show that here, a uh, picture on the screen. Basically, it just shows that through all of humanity, all of history, there is this dip in our happiness curve. No matter where you're from, what age, what nationality, how much money you have, all of us, especially at a certain age in life, things get really dark for us, especially as men. It could be women as well, but talking to the men especially. In those moments, remember, it'll get better. You see on this curve, things eventually began to turn around. And that's the hope that we all need to hang on to, that God, like he says in his word in Philippians 1, he began a good work in you and he will complete it. Now, right now, you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. But remember, fear no evil, for the Lord your God is with you. Things will get better. Number four is don't do anything crazy when you're in the valley. As I said at the beginning, the stereotype is that in the valley is when men can just lose control, go back to habits, go and have an affair, go and spend a bunch of money they don't have, or go back to addictions and to dis destructive habits. This is the time to hang on, my dear friend. This is the time for you to say, Lord, I am being tempted. I know what I used to do, but in the name of Jesus, I'm going to declare victory over me in the middle of this valley because your rod and your staff are with me. They bring me comfort. Don't do anything crazy. If you are already walking down that road, make sure you, you grab someone and you say, hey, I need your accountability. I need you to just without judgment, and with lots of love to just know that these are the things that I am being tempted to do or to, or to go back to. Would you be my friend in the valley? And by the way, if you need someone, I would love to be that person in your life. And then the last one, number five, is as I said, resurrection is coming. A new beginning is coming. A new day is coming. The Bible says that though there is pain in the night, gozo comes in the morning, joy comes in the morning. 
It might be a year, two, three, five years. I don't know. We, none of us know how long this valley may take. My personal valley took 10 years. 10 years, a long time. I hope that yours isn't that long. It probably won't be. I had a lot of learning to do. But in time, in due time, joy will come back to your life. Your dreams, they won't be exactly the same thing. If you've lost a loved one, if you went through a divorce, if you went bankrupt, you won't get those things back necessarily. But God will do something new in your life that is even better than before. That's what happened to Job. Remember at the end of the story of Job, after God had reminded Job that he was with him, it says that God gave Job tenfold his reward. 10 times the cattle, 10 times his riches, more children than he even knew what to do with. Blessed beyond, blessed beyond measure. And that's what's coming. Right now, if you're going through it, grab a friend. Most of all, put your life on the altar of Jesus Christ. Hang on. Don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything that you will regret in the future. Hang on to Jesus. Look for a friend. Make sure that you surrender your life to God and you hang in there. Happiness will come. Joy will certainly come back to you in the morning in due time. And then you will see that all of this is part, a part of God's purpose in your life. I'm with you. I'm praying for you. You be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. And again, if you need someone, make sure that you reach out to me. I'm here to help you. I can't wait to talk to you soon. Thank you for being here and I will see you next time. Adios.